A few days ago, HarperCollins came out with some reprints of Lord of the Rings, and uh, the reaction was predictably awful, because when you see them, it turns out the covers have nothing to do with Lord of the Rings. In fact, these are the Rings of Power, and they're just the standard screenshots, the movie poster style of cover, which the Rings of Power did, including things like Warrior Galadriel. Now, the issue is, obviously, these are trash because they've got nothing to do with the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This is about the prequel. It's an attempt to tie them to this property. And people weren't happy right from the start. You've got no thanks, I've already got my copies. Reprehensible. This is prime washed. Uh, buy some dusty versions from a local bookstore, Evil Cannot Create. No, no, I'll stick with the re original. This isn't fan fiction. Fan fiction is written by fans. All of which is the kind of response you would expect to something which is as low effort as this. But the book covers weren't what I was most interested in. My question was, why? Why go to the effort of reprinting the covers? Because that takes money, and that takes time and effort, and if anything, these are going to lower the sales of the books, not increase them. So there's a direct negative monetary reason for Amazon to do this, and yet they decided to do it anyway. And if a company doesn't do something for money, there's really only two other reasons. Either they gain something else from it, or it's been taken over by its staff, and they're just simply forcing their opinions out onto the platform of the company. Now, in this case, I think the latter's unlikely, simply because of how many people would have to all get involved to make something like this happen. And so if they don't get money out of it, what do they get? And I think this leads on to the question of prequels. Why are so many writers and properties obsessed with doing prequels? Because I can't stand prequels, I've got to be honest. I would much rather sequels which advance the story forward. Even if that means going on to new characters and building up something from scratch, I still would much prefer that than a prequel. So why are so many companies buying IPs and doing prequels with them? This has happened for a long time. You saw Disney do this with Star Wars, things like Solo, going back in time to ingratiate themselves into that time period with characters that they had nothing to do with creating. We've got Game of Thrones doing a prequel with House of the Dragon, and of course, Rings of Power itself, will indeed be a prequel in an area where they keep saying there's not enough lore, we don't know about the stories, when actually it turns out they just don't have the rights to talk about it. So they're going to fill in gaps. And if you're going to be filling in gaps anyway, whether it's a prequel or a sequel shouldn't matter. So why did they make the decision? Now I'm aware that my comments could well be seen as <gasps> negative, and that is obviously bad, you see. Sharing this for all our fellow Lord of the Rings enthusiasts and media outlets who might get discouraged by the toxic Tolkien takes on YouTube. It's the algorithm's fault, you see, and does not represent an honest view of our fandom. Yes, Lord of the Rings and all of its fandom is solely controlled by the one ring.net those are the true fans which get to absolutely gatekeep who can and who can't talk about lord of the rings you see no one is actually honest on youtube it's all the algorithm yes you're actually not even in control of what you click on youtube no you don't get to make a decision you just have the algorithm force videos upon you and you have no other choice than to watch them. I can understand your horror of being forced to watch me in a video, and I can only apologize for the incredible suffering that you are going through with absolutely no autonomy of your own. And if that doesn't exemplify Amazon's marketing strategy, I really don't know what will. This is something where they realize they've made something that they want to create, but something that nobody will want. And that's why the marketing can't just be truthful. They can't just provide you footage or trailers. They've always got to get other people's, the uh, influencers. I don't think anyone who's honest actually calls themselves an influencer. I'm just giving you my opinion. I'm not trying to influence you, but this opinion is why Amazon's marketing has actually focused on trying to shovel it into your mouth while everyone tells you it's amazing, rather than just presenting you with something and saying, make up your own mind. If they were actually convinced of the quality of their own work, they wouldn't need everyone else to say how amazing it is, or people to try and jump to their defense. They wouldn't need to try and knock down anyone who had a different opinion of theirs, or indeed anyone who comments realistically about what's going to happen based on experience and the proof in front of our eyes. They wouldn't need to call them clout chasing or they're just doing it for upvotes and views. I'll let you into a little secret. Every single YouTube video that's ever been made has been made for views. Nobody makes a video and then hopes nobody watches it. That's crazy talk. I do love though their comment about we only want a good show made by capable artists. Yeah, because nobody else does, right? I think the point that other people are making is that it doesn't look like it's going to be a good show, 
all made by capable artists. And that is where the obsession with prequels comes in. You see, Disney tried to make Star Wars, tried to make sequels, tried to introduce new characters, and they couldn't because they lacked the talent or were so obsessed with trying to push a message that the actual entertainment of it was completely lost. They had too many restrictions. You can't make Rey do this. You can't give her a struggle. She has to be absolutely perfect. And that makes a boring story. It doesn't really matter whether trash is created through lack of talent of the writer or someone that's so obsessed with a twisted ideology that they can no longer actually focus their talent into an actually good piece of work. It doesn't matter how you get there. The end result is the same a film that nobody wants to watch. And so what are you left with if you can only produce trash? Because mentally, I think it's a lot easier to write off a sequel than it is a prequel. Because you can just end a story at a point and not care after what comes after it. But a prequel, that's a lot harder to write off mentally because it came before. It's actually intrinsically linked to the story and they will make it so. They can go back in time, put in references, tie themselves into the future. They actually are the reason that what you actually liked was even made. And then a whole new generation of people come through who will watch it in order. I imagine that a lot of younger people nowadays will watch the Star Wars movie in chronological order rather than the order in which they were made, which is a travesty. But it will inevitably lead to the prequels being more attached to the original trilogy than it would be for someone that watched them in the order they were actually created. And that is the power of attaching yourself to something which is far greater than you are. This is an attempt to make something which is their own message, but tie it so intrinsically to the emotional attachment that other people have to another piece of work that they hope it rubs off. That one day people will go back and watch Rings of Power first, and then even if they don't like it that much, thinks, well, it did lead into the Lord of the Rings and I like that. And the two things merge in your brain. I, it's like me with the Wheel of Time. I find it very difficult to think of the books as separate entities. I think of it as one cohesive story. And this enables bad writers who didn't deserve anything to try and get in on the prestige of a work that was far greater than anything they could have done while pushing their own ideas into the story as just a handy little side benefit that gets in for free. And this is the fine line they're trying to take. Because while simultaneously trying to make the Rings of Power inseparable from Lord of the Rings, they also have a secondary problem. That they're nowhere near as good as what Lord of the Rings was. And so they're stuck with trying to simultaneously tear down Lord of the Rings while also attaching themselves to it. And hey, why do they have to do it themselves with their own marketing? when they've got people to do it for them. Because you see all those negative opinions out there, those are incredibly toxic. They're just doing it to get views. They're just doing it because the algorithm is forcing people on them. All these people that don't really want to watch the video are just shoveled into their faces. And the, the sheer horror that they have in watching these videos cannot be underestimated. But it is interesting how someone who simultaneously craps on anyone who has a negative opinion about anything, someone who thinks anyone who isn't giving a positive vibe is just clout chasing, is also intent on dragging down and deriding the decisions made by the much maligned Peter Jackson trilogy. Oh, the Rings of Power has much better characterization. I mean, we only saw 20 minutes of footage, but obviously all the characters are way better than anything Peter Jackson did. And I have a lot more stuff to say along that because it's kind of the amount of things that people have been saying which are entirely contradictory. All that can take up another video in itself, but the sheer hypocrisy of it all is kind of what amazes me. And you would think that the lesson would be just make quality content. That's all anybody wants. Then you can just send it out to the public and they will like it because it's good and quality speaks for itself. But when quality doesn't speak for itself because it's lacking the quality, what you then need is to get other people to try and convince or influence people for you. That's when you need these weird little strategies to come out with prequels to try and tie yourself to other works. None of this would be necessary if you actually made a good product. But that's not really the aim. That would require the writers, the creators, to get out of the piece. To stop putting them in it, their opinions, their beliefs, that nobody is interested in. And a lot of people, if not most people, are utterly repulsed by. Nobody is watching a Lord of the Rings anything to find out what these writers actually think about Lord of the Rings or what the universe should look like. Nobody really cares. What they're after is something that's recognizably and intrinsically Tolkien and that doesn't seem to be what they're getting. This is why they've been forced to get other people on their side, just to try and convince people 
not to believe their lying eyes. And it really speaks to the incredibly low opinion that you actually have of an audience when you start saying that they're all just influenced by the algorithm and can't possibly think for themselves. They can't make their own decisions. And yet that also explains why they're all so convinced that just with the right marketing strategy, we can make them swallow anything that we create. That we don't have to create anything good because we only have to convince them that it's good, because they'll just believe whatever they're told. They're already swayed by an algorithm. Quite frankly, how hard can it be? I'm here saying maybe you should actually just create something that's good, because I think people can tell the difference between good content and bad content. But if you think that people are just so easily swayed and influenced by the first opinion that happens across their mind, I can fully understand why you think this is just a simple perceptional battle and people don't know what to think until you give them their opinion. Quite frankly, the entire idea seems incredibly offensive to me. And all my videos are, are my opinion. I'm not trying to influence anyone. I'm literally just here saying what I think about a topic and collecting various different pieces of information and showing them to you. Utterly bizarre to describe something as toxic or the algorithm's fault when I'm literally just showing you what they're saying. In the last video, I just showed you the events they went to and what they got for free and said the very logical conclusion that I don't see how you could get all of that and not have it influence your opinion despite what they actually have tried to say. Quite frankly, if you're that bothered by someone literally putting your words on the screen so much that you describe it as toxic, I'm not sure that's my fault. And it might simply be a reason for you to reconsider what you're saying, the position that you're putting forwards, and the bed that you've made for yourself. And you know the really interesting part? All of this was my thoughts on why people can do this, the reasons why people could do it, and pointing out what I think is going on. But I end every video by going, what do you think? And you can let me know down in the comments below. And you know what? That's a lot more than these, uh, real fans are doing. Because it seems like the, uh, real fans like to make comments about people and then, uh, oh yeah, turn off who can reply. I don't know why you'd turn off replies unless you were scared of people uh, commenting on you trying to frame a certain narrative. But that isn't something I do. Because I'm not scared of the truth. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video, subscribe, more videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one, because there's a lot to talk about this, and I've barely scratched the surface on some of the comments which I've already shown you, and there's a lot more to get into. So that is gonna be good. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.